Regardless of how simplistic or complex a video game's world, characters, and concepts may be, there's one crucial aspect of the development process that greatly affects the impression it leaves on the player. Art design. Video games are a visual medium. The word video is right there. And as such, a game's style and detail can either hurt or help the experience. Even if a game's graphical fidelity isn't all that impressive on a technical level, it can still receive a lot of praise for having an eye-catching aesthetic. In fact, the right aesthetic can slow a game's aging. Some of them stay visually appealing for many years because of how they look, and sometimes that may even be in spite of dated gameplay. But behind the scenes, there are many talented people working together to create that style. Character designers, environmental artists, texture artists, HUD and menu designers, modelers, lighting artists, animators, and more. They make up the art design team, and they're usually led by a lead artist or art director who ensures that all the created art fit together cohesively and don't clash aesthetically. More often than not, these leads are actually very skilled artists in their own right, too. In some cases, their names have become almost inherently linked with the games they helped create. In this video, I want to briefly talk about some of my favorite artists and illustrators in the industry. You might be wondering what the occasion for this video is, and it's simply because I noticed April is Leonardo da Vinci's birth month, so I figured it'd be fun. This isn't a topic I see people go over very often, except in passing. I've been playing video games for a long time, and I've grown to really love the work of certain individuals who have stood out to me the most, so I want to take the time to give them some much-deserved praise. Without any further ado, let's go down the short list of names, presented in no particular order, of course, as they're all equally talented. First is Yoshitaka Amano. He's a man of many skills and has been a professional illustrator for a long, long time, dating back to the late 60s, where he worked on anime like Gachaman and Speed Racer. But in the world of video games, his name is tied closest to the Final Fantasy franchise, which he's been a part of since day one and continues to be, though not as prominently now as he was before. He's worked on every single mainline Final Fantasy title to some degree, as either a character designer, promotional illustrator, and especially title logo designer. Amano created almost every single logo for the series, with the only exception being Final Fantasy IX's. But beyond that, he's made many character portraits and promotional art in his vibrant style that features his trademark thin, wispy lines and very liberal use of color. His character pieces often feature great detail in the subject's hair, clothes, and the background. In close-ups, their faces are typically featureless, but they bear very large, expressive eyes. In some of his artwork, he utilizes very soft shading that creates a sort of dreamlike aesthetic. Amano's style bears a strong resemblance to both Japanese ukiyo-e woodblock prints and the work of Austrian painter Gustav Klimt. His work isn't for everyone, as some people will be overloaded by some of his more complex stuff, but it is undoubtedly one of the most distinctive art styles in the business. It's almost impossible to mistake it for anyone else's. I really admire how he's able to take almost any subject or genre and make it feel so surreal. His fantastic use of lines, color, shading, and deliberate spots of both intricate detail and total lack of it makes some of his pieces seem like whimsical, lucid visions, as if he was able to take a still frame of a dream and perfectly recreate it on paper. His ties with Square Enix and relationship with Final Fantasy seems to grow thinner as the years go on and he pursues different projects, but I always look forward to seeing anything he creates. From collaborating with Neil Gaiman on works about David Bowie, to making portraits of DC characters, Amano leaves an impression wherever his art goes. My next artist is Yoji Shinkawa. He's best known for his work on the Metal Gear franchise, but generally speaking, he's had very strong ties to Hideo Kojima since the day he started working at Konami. His first role in the company was a debugger for the PC-98 version of Kojima's Police Knots, but he was able to quickly climb the ladder to become art director for his next project, Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation 1, a hell of a title to make your art debut. More specifically, he contributed character and mecha designs for the games, and his art style stands out as one of the most unique in the industry, but it may also seem a bit familiar. Turns out, Shinkawa actually credits our previous artist, Yoshitaka Amano, as being one of his primary influences. Matter of fact, 
He even admitted that he started out as an artist by imitating Amano, and if you squint a bit, you can definitely see the resemblance in Shinkawa's older work. He's very good at action poses and weight distribution, and his brush strokes give an air of confidence and purpose. I'm a particularly big fan of his later pieces featuring harsher shading and stronger brushwork, where he seems to exclude edges entirely and draw only where shadow would be. They bear exactly the kind of futuristic but grungy aesthetic that really catches my eye. I love the way these pieces look. Outside of gameplay trailers, new Yoji Shinkawa art is probably the thing I always look forward to the most in the lead-up to a new Hideo Kojima game. Hell, if any non-Kojima company commissions him for key art for their game, I become more interested in that game in general. To this day, I still consider buying a copy of Left Alive just so I can have that cover art, and that game is not very popular, which is putting it very, very lightly. I'm lucky enough to have a physical poster of his Pacific Rim art hanging up on my wall, and while it's not some sort of super rare or expensive thing, I consider it a prized possession. The next artist is one who contributes to a franchise I'm admittedly not as familiar with, but her art plays a massive part in my passing interest of the series. And she is Ayami Kojima, a frequent character designer and illustrator for the Castlevania series, beginning with Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation 1. From there, she's given her talents to create pieces for Harmony of Dissonance, Aria of Sorrow, Lament of Innocence, Dracula X Chronicles, Harmony of Despair, and the short-lived mobile game Grimoire of Souls. Her distinctive style always catches the eye and adequately portrays the game's gothic aesthetic with incredible detail. She utilizes several different tools and techniques in her pieces, including Conte crayon sticks and pastels for rough sketches, India ink for shadows, molding paste for textures, and acrylics and finger smudging for base colors. Even some of the Castlevania games that might not be considered to be as good as the others are still lucky to be associated with her art, especially when they're used as the cover. Whether in person or online, I don't think I've ever not stopped to admire Kojima's art when I see it. It's almost impossible to pass up the chance to give it the admiration it deserves. The detail in the background and characters' clothing and hair, the soft and harsh shading on their faces, and the vibrant colors all come together in such a striking way while giving a faithful representation of each game's gothic style, with hints of religious imagery and surrealism. A recurring theme in her work seems to be everything being beautiful. Even the men she draws are deceptively attractive, and oftentimes effeminate or androgynous. Yet they don't clash with their grim surroundings because everything is just so pretty. I'd love to own an art book of Kojima's work, but, uh, yeah. I'll have to keep crossing my fingers on that. The fourth and final artist that I've chosen to discuss is, honestly, kind of cheating because he's mostly associated with films, but he has made promotional art for some games, so it still kind of counts. And the artist is Noriyoshi Orai, who is probably most famous for his incredible poster art for Heisei-era Godzilla films. He passed away from pneumonia fairly recently, in October 2015, at the age of 79. But his art will continue to live on as some of the best in the Godzilla franchise. If you were to ask me which poster design of his is my favorite, I'd be here all day, racking my brain trying to pick one or the other because they're all just incredible. I want to plaster my wall with all of them. The Return of Godzilla poster looks downright evil, threatening, and destructive, as it should because it's a movie where Godzilla is the bad guy again. The Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah poster is an insanely badass action shot with Ghidorah's three heads and two tails wrapped around a struggling Big G, and a submarine in the foreground launching a missile. The Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 poster features jaw-dropping detail in all three of its featured beasts and machinery, with a very gritty, metallic color scheme. The Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla poster is an eye-popping explosion of vibrant color, and the others are just as impressive. Outside of Godzilla, he's created art for Mad Max 2, the Star Wars series, and more. In regards to games he's contributed illustrations to, his most popular are, coincidentally, his Metal Gear Solid pieces, specifically Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, and Portable Ops. As far as I can tell, he didn't make anything for 4 or 5, 
which is unfortunate as I'd always like to see more work from him. Orai may have left us, but his work is simply timeless. His masterful attention to detail and usage of color makes all of his work shine with life. No matter how much time passes, I have no doubt in my mind that his artistic prowess will always be admired and his work constantly purchased to adorn the walls of many fans of Godzilla, Star Wars, Metal Gear, and more. And this more or less concludes this particular video about some of my favorite illustrators and artists in the game industry. I only went over four people, all of whom are Japanese funnily enough, that was not planned. But there's a lot of talented people out there, and I'm sure you probably have a different collection of names who come to mind when you think of your favorites. It's a big industry. Maybe in the future I'll do another video going over a few different artists not mentioned here. Maybe in a specific genre where character artists play a particularly important part. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.